today I'm going to show you how to make one of these boxes out of magazine pages. And I'm going to go into a lot more detail than I've done in the past, uh, especially the construction of the lid. I know in the, the last video I did that I will link to, I, I really glossed over the lid part. <laughs> And I did it because I had not yet come up with like a definite design for the lid. I just kind of pieced it together until it worked out. Okay, I figured it out now, or I figured it out what I like. So I'm going to show you how to get a consistently um, sturdy lid that fits just right. You know, it goes on um, really easy. It doesn't wobble around too much. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you how to roll up the tubes just right. Um... I've got a different uh, handle option I'm going to show you. So yeah, I've got a lot to show you, but at the end of it, you're going to be able to just crank these out like nobody's business. Because yeah, it honestly, it's not as big of a deal as it looks like. The You have to roll a lot of paper tubes, but it's super easy to do like sitting in front of the TV. It's just, you know, mindless rolling. So it's one of those things you don't have to put a lot of thought into. You don't need any kind of special tools or equipment or, or supplies. Um, this is an extremely thrifty project. And these boxes, once they're done, I don't know if you can tell, these are super sturdy. Like this one sits on the dresser in my bedroom and it keeps, this is loose change from all over the world. <laughs> Some of it is from places that me and Jason have been and others are just places that other people have been. And, you know, you get um, exchange money while you're there and you just end up with a few dollars left over at the end of the trip. It's not worth exchanging back, so you bring it home. And we have this collection of it. Money's heavy, extremely heavy, and this box holds it perfectly. Super sturdy. So, let's get started. The way I always start these boxes is with a cardboard bottom. And I do this because, uh, first of all, it's sturdy and it kind of helps me, you know, it's going to be exactly square or rectangle or whatever and it kind of helps me to keep everything else in that shape so that nothing gets wonky, it doesn't get all skewed. So I like to start with a piece of cardboard and a cereal box will do anything like this, a scrap of chipboard or cardboard or whatever you got. And this is going to be the length and width of my box. And uh, then I need to roll up some tubes. And I'm using magazine pages. You can use uh, pretty much any kind of paper, wrapping paper, scrapbook paper, thin, it needs to be kind of thin bodied, newspaper, uh, book pages, music books, you know, whatever. Dictionaries will probably be pretty good. I just happen to like magazines. And when you go through a magazine, you're going to notice that some pages are, especially fashion magazines, that not all the paper is the same. Some of the pages, especially like the perfume ads, are on a much thicker, heavier, glossier paper. And I usually avoid those um, just because they're hard to roll up. I'll use them for paper beads, but for this, I don't want heavy paper. I want, I want it to be pretty thin. And the way that we roll it up, it's going to, you know, even really thin paper is still going to be nice and sturdy when we're done. So, to roll a tube, you're going to need something to roll it on, some kind of skewer. And you can use like an actual skewer. They have these sometimes at the grocery store for making like shish kebab, vegetables and meats and stuff. Um, you can get a dowel at the craft store. I've used knitting needles. As long as they're, you know, they don't have a little weirdness on the end, I like it completely flat. And however big around it is, doesn't really matter. I've used different sizes. Just play with what you like. Get your skewer. Magazine pages, you're going to cut them to the width. Whatever width you cut them, that's going to be the height of your box. So I think these were three and a half inches wide. 
yep, three and a half inches wide. And just depending on your magazine, you know, most of them at three and a half inches, you can get, um, you know, each page will give you two strips and then maybe a little bit of scrap. So that's three and a half inches is the height that I like. And I use the full length of the page. So I'm going to take my strip and I'm looking to see what I want on the end because the whole pattern, you know, the design is going to get all rolled up in there and nothing is going to show except for like the very, I don't know, maybe the last inch this much. <laughs> so I just kind of figure out, okay, that's at least got something going on. That's what I want to show once I get it rolled up. So I'm going to put that face down at the top because this is how this is how I roll. <laughs> did you see what I did there? This is how I roll. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to lay this down just like that. Kind of do this so my paper knows, you know, okay, we're going to roll. And then just kind of help it get started. Roll it up. I'm, I'm kind of squeezing right here so that it stays uh, snug up against my skewer. And if you'll see right here, see how that's all, um, it didn't roll evenly? Yep, that's just kind of what it does. And you can kind of wiggle it around and fix it. Or what I usually do is just pull it off. See, which made it a whole lot worse. But that's okay because I have a tight grip on the middle of it. So, you know, it's not going anywhere. And then just sort of push it down. And I'm, I'm tugging this end so that it's kind of straight and see problem solved. Yeah. And then what you're going to want to do is glue this. These I use like a lot of glue, a lot, a lot, a lot of glue all over these boxes. So I'm not worried about this being, you know, super duper glued down awesomely. So I'm just going to use whatever cheap, cheesy glue stick I've got on hand. And it just doesn't get any cheaper or cheesier than these from the Dollar Tree. Because when they had like all the back to school stuff, I got eight of these for $1.25. <laughs> this is not awesome glue. This is glue that works okay for this situation. <laughs> So that's all I need. Put some glue stick there and then roll that up. Make sure it's down good. And if it's not, then I'll, you know, add a little more, whatever, doesn't matter. Just get it to hold because um, that's all you need it to do at this point. When you start putting, doing all the assembly, you're going to be using a lot more glue and better glue and that will be the important part this one not so much so you're going to glue up a bunch of these for a box this size i think i counted and it was like around 101 tubes which sounds like a lot it's well i don't know maybe it is it's 101 that's that's a lot i guess but like I said, if you're just, you got your little lap tray in front of the TV and you're just kind of, you know, rolling up and watching some silly show, it goes fast. It really does. So don't, don't think, oh my gosh, it'll take me forever to roll all those tubes. It won't. It'll, like everything, there's a little bit of a learning curve. And then once you, once you hit your groove, you know, you're going to figure out how to hold everything that's easiest for you. You're going to figure out which glue is easiest for you. Um, and then it's just, it'll go really fast. It will. So there we go. And I'm really, I like to use the glue stick at this point instead of a wet glue. Because, um, you know, like I said, I don't, they don't have to be held together super, super well right now. But also, it's really easy for this to get messy. And you um, might end up with, you know, glue blobs and, and 
and you know icky dry glue off your fingers that sticks to them and I don't usually even notice it till the whole thing's finished and I've like varnished over all that crap and it just looks kind of sad <laughs> and it makes me go oh I wish I'd pay closer attention <laughs> so this is kind of me paying closer attention in the beginning by using a uh, glue stick that's not going to make a lot of a gluey mess at this point anyway so that's all there is to that. You roll these up, you roll up a whole bunch of them, and then you're going to want a little bit better glue now. And what I've been using is this reptile glue. I think like um, a tacky glue would be good. You want something kind of thick that dries pretty fast. It must dry clear. And something that grabs hold fast and and this checks all those boxes so that's what I'm using now I've got my uh, my cardboard y'all there it is for my Cheerios this is the cinnamon oat crunch I really like that you know in case you wanted to know so uh, this is going to be the bottom of my box and this is going to show on the back side like this so I want to glue my tubes to the printed side if you're using scrap you might want to pay attention to that and I usually just kind of pull my tubes out lay them out just to kind of see how many it's going to take and when I do that sometimes I can see oh I didn't roll that one up as tight as the others you know that one's weird I don't want it it's going to happen that's okay so I can kind of see, oh, looks like I'm going to need about this many. And then I'll kind of make sure, you know, they're a little bit random. Don't have to be exact, but I don't want like four white ones in a row. So spread them out in perfect randomness. See, that one's a little fat too. I don't know what happened there, but... That doesn't mean that I'm not going to use it. it. just means I'm not going to use it right now. Okay. Now, I take my... This is that reptile glue, and I've got it in this little bottle because it's got the little nozzle. And I'm going to find the seam where, um, you know, the end of the strip that I glued down. And then I'm going to line a bead of glue just kind of along that seam. So see, that's why the cheap glue stick doesn't really matter because it just needs to hold it until we get to this point. Then I'm going to just put that down like that. And I want it, you know, flush with the end of my cardboard. And it's going to be, you know, I made my tubes the same height as the cardboard, so we're good there. And then I'm just going to keep going. And I'm going to run another bead of glue along the seam, sort of. I think I missed it. That's okay. Put it down there. And keep going. So this part actually goes pretty fast. I mean, the only, the only slow part of this sometimes is waiting for the glue to dry. And not so much at this point, because this glue dries pretty fast. But when we start building the walls that don't have the backing, yeah, that one takes a little bit of time. Okay, you're just going to keep going. And honestly, you don't really have to pay much attention to anything because, you know, as long as you're, you're flush with the end and up next to each other, it should stay square. You know, pay attention because if you, you know, don't glue one down exactly right, you know, it's a little bit like this. It's going to mess up your whole thing. So just make sure everything is snug. You don't have to squeeze them tight. Just snug up against each other and keep going. Fill that whole thing out until you've got something like this. So all of my strips or my tubes have been glued down onto my cardboard. 
the cardboard and the and, and the tubes here are flush. Everything's flush. Everything is glued down. Now, let's do. Okay, let me show you how to assemble the two sides because this is the bottom. We're gonna have two sides that are gonna be exactly the same length as this, and then two shorter sides, right? So, to do the two sides that you know the two long sides here, we're, it's like it's more of the same. I just pull out pull out my little tubes. That one is still too fat. There we go. One of my plexo. And okay, sometimes um see how I look I don't know if you can tell. But it looks like that this panel is going to be slightly shorter than this one. And it may be, you know, because the tubes are not exact. These are not engineer precise. I think if I put one more, it looks like this is going to be a little bit too wide now right because it's just slightly and doesn't have to be exact but apparently it does because that's what I'm worried about so see this this tube looks a little fat so I might toss it and find one that's a little skinnier and oh that pretty much solved my problem and it I may have to kind of see as I go along because the glue is going to add a little you know a little space in between these how many do I still feel like I'm off. No, that's right. I've got the exact same number of tubes, and that's what I want. And it looks like they're about the exact same length. So I just want to make sure that I don't put up so much glue that it makes this expand. Because you do want all of your panels, you know, your three long panels the same size. So back to the gluing and again I just find my seam which is right there glue along the seam and then I'm going to find the seam of this one match it up there we go And I kind of might kind of keep it up against this one to keep it from getting wonky. You want to make sure that everything stays as square as level as possible. So this one, there's something clogging my glue. Chances are I don't want to know what it is, so we're just going to keep going. And glue on the seam. Is that the seam? Sometimes I can't tell. I gotta get it right up in my face. Because my old lady eyes can't see anymore. Okay. Yep. We're looking good. So you just keep going until you have two more panels that are the same length as your bottom piece. And when you're done, they will look like this. So you've got three identical panels. They're going to do this. Now at this point what I like to do is kind of reinforce my panels. You can do this after you assemble it. It's just easier to do it before you assemble it. And I will take and um, oh I should have okay I'll just use this this unfinished one. But when I get my panel just like I want it and I will take some, this is a mixture of about half Mod Podge, half 
Elmer's glue all and just a little splash of water to thin it out. You can use just plain Elmer's or Mod Podge or, you know, whatever kind of PVA white glue you want. And then I'll take and I will put this down the seam of each of the tubes like that. And then I'll just use my finger to make sure it's all the way into that seam and all the way out to the ends. And I do use a generous amount of glue. So yeah, don't be shy with the glue. Then I'll take a brush and just smooth out because you know I don't want those glue the glue to dry and ridges like that. So I'll smooth it out. And then I usually turn on the ceiling fan and just kind of let it dry. And once that's dry, I'll come back, flip it over, and do the same thing on the other side. And this is really what helps to make these boxes so sturdy. And, you know, this is not expensive, fancy glue, y'all. This is, <laughs> this is stuff that's easily available and affordable. So, yeah, don't be shy about using a bunch of it to... Um, Cut your panels and to make sure that everything, you know, it's all glued up really well and sealed together. And that's what I've done with these. Both sides, I did that thing with the glue. And so they are super sturdy. Now, we've got these. We're going to need two ends, right? You're going to do the exact same thing you did for these. You're just going to go this way. You're going to lay these out. And you're going to like, you know, see how many you need. You're going to do that for both ends, just like that. Glue them together, and then you'll have two panels like this. Uh, you know, seal it just like we did. So to complete your box, you need your bottom, and then two long panels for the long sides. And then you're going to need two short panels for the short sides. And then we're going to do the lid separately because I want to spend more time on that. But what I do from here, I usually construct this, I start with hot glue. And the reason is because um, I'm not, I, I seem to always, you know, do that or that. <laughs> or, you know, I, I get it together with the glue and then as it dries, it starts doing this. <laughs> So with the hot glue, if it does start messing up like that, I can just take the heat gun and melt it and fix it. So that that's the whole reason behind that. And I just put a little bead right down here at the bottom. Not very much of it, just enough to hold. And then, you know, make sure we're even on the ends and then hold it until it sets. Yeah, because that's the quickest, easiest way. And then I do go in with my PVA later and, um, you know, reinforce all that because hot glue, I have trust issues with hot glue. If I live in, I live in Northwest Arkansas. I have always lived in the Southern United States. It's hot down here, y'all. <laughs> it just gets hot. My air conditioner goes out. Everything in my house that has been attached with hot glue, it lets go. <laughs> so I, the hot glue is not my favorite. So yeah, do the same thing over here. Now I want to do the same thing with my short end panels here. And if you'll notice, there's going to be a gap at the corner. Right? Because we made this, you know, just as long as our, our sticks. And there's going to be a little gap on each corner. And the gap usually ends up being about one tube wide. And that's what you want. Because after you get all this glued together, then you're going to go in and put that tube there and finish off your corner. And then that will even everything out. 
in theory. If it doesn't, you know what, you just make it work. You just shove that thing in there <laughs> until it works. So, more hot glue. And now for the corners. This is where, this is why I don't, you know, sometimes like I had those extra fat ones and I went, ooh, too fat. Sometimes you might need that extra fat one on a corner, just depending on how your corners come out. So that's why I don't just toss those. Um, I should really keep them in a different stack. But, yeah, sometimes you need a little extra fat one or a little extra thin one just to make everything even out. Oh, it looks like it's going to be just right. And I'm going to go back to my Reptile glue or Tacky glue or whatever glue you're using to, to build here. We'll just get it to hold and then uh, yeah, I can go in and fill the gap that I missed. Got a lot of wet glue, so it's going to look a little a little janky right now, but it'll be fine once we get all our corners in there and get them dried. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue around and glue these in. Now once you get your little corner tubes glued in, your box is basically done and you can move on to the lid. And we're going to do a lid kind of like the, I say kind of because I, I tweaked it in my mind as I was making it, <laughs> but it's basically like that. Um, okay, you're going to need one more long panel, and which I should have just said before, you know, make four instead of three, or make three of the side panels and one bottom panel all the same size, but I didn't say that because I forgot. So yeah, you're just going to need one more of the side panels just like you made for the box and that's what we're going to start with for the lid. Now this is not going to fit as a lid as you can see. It is a little bit too short and a little bit too narrow and I have done this different ways. You know I've, I've made the tubes longer. I did you know this kind of construction which is is doable but I didn't like it I've tried doing the tubes this way I really super duper hate rolling up long tubes this is not easy to do and not fun and um, it's it's tricky to do with this kind of design especially because your magazine you know you can only roll up the width of your magazine so, you know, if your magazine is eight or eight and a half inches wide, that's as long as you can roll a tube up. You cannot turn your magazine this way and roll like this to make a longer tube. Well, I mean, obviously you can. You shouldn't, and here's why. Because every single one of the tubes that we've made is the same length as your magazine. The tubes have an inside diameter and they have an outside diameter. The inside diameter is going to be the same for every tube because you have rolled it around the same size mandrel. The outside diameter is going to be the same for every tube because all of your strips were the same length. If you turn it this way, you've shortened the length of the page. So your inside diameter is going to be exactly the same. It will look like this your outside diameter will not be the same. You're going to end up with a weirdly skinny tube and it's going to be bendier because it's not going to have as many uh, layers that you've rolled. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's why you should work with a magazine where, or work with the size of a box where you know that you can get um, all of the size tubes that you need out of a standard size magazine. This was like a Vogue or a bizarre or you know regular magazine size and this base that I started with was my little cardboard piece you know 
this was about almost okay six inches long by three and a half inches wide so three and a half by six is about the maximum size box I can make from from that size base out of one of these magazines using this lid construction that I'm going to show you. Now if you use a different kind of lid, you know, you make your tubes different, like, you know, that kind or, or whatever, then, you know, you can probably get away with making a little bit bigger box. But if you're going to do your lid this way, this is about as big as you can go. And it's going to be as big as you want to go because when you're rolling up, this is like seven, seven and a quarter inches wide. <laughs> you're going to see that it is not fun and you're going to totally understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> so, the lid. Here is our uh, lid panel. And what we're going to do is, you know, like I said, this is not quite as wide and not quite as long as our box so we have to build it out and what I like to do is take um, okay see I've already pre pre-measured pre-cut and I always cut more than I think I'll need because you never know and I don't know which ones it was I think it's this one no it's not that one it's this one yes so you're going to cut tubes you either measure or just hold your page up there and make a mark you know if you're not into measuring doesn't matter but you're going to need to roll you some tubes the same length as the the length of your um, panel so this is what I do in my head I'm saying long side short side long side short side so I go I give me two tubes I go long side long side and now I measure from here to here to see what size I need it's not that one it is not that one why are you there it's this one there we go so see it comes to the end of those tubes so short side short side so I've added um, one tube to each in in each side and now you can kind of take your box and see where you're at this should be yeah this is going to be about exactly the size of my box right but this is the lid it's going to have to fit over the top so I need one more round to um, make it wide enough and long enough to fit over my box so long side long side short side short side do that again long side long side short side short side so that's not it <laughs> here it's these two long side long side okay short side short side uh, maybe that's these two yes short side short side long side long side short side short side long side long side short side short side get it that's how you build out the um, length and width of your lid to go over your box. Then you can kind of set your box down and you can see that, no you can't, but trust me, you've got one tube on each side all the way around that your, your lid is about one tube bigger all the way around. Now I've got one tube on each end one tube on each side and that's what you need because after you glue these down then you're going to start building up this way to make the lip for your lid because it has to have a little lip right so we have to get the size right and then we build the lip so let's go ahead and glue these in place and I'm going to use this glue And just go ahead and do just like we did all the other ones. Find my seam. Run a bead of glue. And stick it down. Just line up those ends. You're going to want it to be pretty flush. 
Okay, this is not really going to stick very good because I'm on the open end. So, plan B, here's what we're going to do. Now, if I wasn't doing this on camera, I'd probably just, you know, blob this glue down in there and let it dry. But I don't want to have to take the time to do that. So I'm just going to use some hot glue. A little bit of hot glue. Yeah, let's just see if that will hold it. We just need good enough. Yeah. There we go. And I'll do my other one. Just feeling to see that I'm all flush with the ends. I think I am. So, long side, long side, now short side, short side, and these, you know, these ones that I'm adding, they go all the way to the end. So I cover up that, uh, that one that I just put on, I cover that end. Long side, long side, short side, short side. I'm just going to keep saying that so that you know and you won't forget when you go to construct yours what you're supposed to do. Now, you have to, you know, remeasure every time because now you need two beads that are going to extend to cover this whole end. Not just this one you put on, but then the two new ones. So see, this one's got to go over all of that. So you remeasure, roll your beads, and I can't tell you, you know, add a quarter inch or add a half inch each time. I can't tell you that because it depends on the size of your bead, how tightly you rolled it, how much glue is in between, how, how much you pressed them together. <laughs> you know, there's too many variables. <laughs> so just eyeball it. It's all good. Now, there is our lid at the correct size. It, that doesn't help you at all. It's probably not going to help you either, but yeah. I can feel I have got about one tube on each side and that's going to be just what I need to now build the lip. And then you can decide right here of, oh, do I want this to be the top or do I want this to be the top? You know, sometimes you've got a little boo-boo that you want to put on the bottom and that's fine. So make your decision and then we're going to start um, building our lips. <laughs> I don't know why that cracks me up. I don't know what else to call it. It's the, uh, the overhang. Is that better? Okay, it's the overhang. Um, now this is going to go just on these outside tubes. So, I've got, I already measured and cut these, and it's, we're going to do the same thing. Long side, long side, short side, short side, and then we'll decide if we want to do it again. See this one, it just has one, um, one tube high. <laughs> what am I trying to say? See here, I did it too, because this one has more of an overhang. This is a much larger box. So that one has more of an overhang. This one has just a little overhang. Doesn't really matter. Just because this was a larger box, um, more substantial, I just wanted it to make be more liddy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. I just felt like the lid was more secure if it went down further. This one, it's a little box. Doesn't really matter. Let's just see how we feel about this one. Because here's what we're going to, okay, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to build up long side, long side, short side, short side, and then go from there. Now, is that what, wait a minute. Okay, let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. This one I went short side, short side, long side, long side. Ooh, is that what I need to do? No, I don't want to do that because that's going to put me funky there. 
short side. No. Yeah, this is what I want to do. Okay. I was right. I just didn't know it. I'm going to go ahead and attach this one. And you really want to make sure that it's it's level and not leaning leaning in because that will affect how it fits your box. And if you find that it is leaning, you just heat that puppy up with some uh, with your heat gun, move it, and then let it set up again. I'm gonna do that anyway because I've got glue blobs right there. I didn't I wasn't paying attention. I think this time what I'll do is put the glue here. Oh, uh, look how smart I get. The more I make them, I kind of figure it out after about the 50th box. Okay. Oh, I missed the seam. Oh, well. <laughs> I can't get it right anyway. And just to make sure I'm not messing up. Oh, see? Fits just right. Comes up on either side. Got a tiny little bit of wiggle room, and that's all I want. Perfect. Now, short side, short side. These, okay. I'm going to have to measure. This looks like it's going to be four and not quite a quarter that tiny little line right before the quarter don't you dare judge me that's how I measure four and the tiny line right before the quarter I gotta keep saying it out loud so I don't forget and I'm gonna cut about four because I have an extra is good So I'm going to do about four of them, and what did I say, four, and the tiny little line right before the quarter, it's right there. I keep these because I never know if I want to make a box like that, or I can cut it up and use it for beads, or I can use it for the handle that we're going to make when we're done with this lid. So, these should fit right in there. So I'm going to roll these up, glue these down, and then we'll decide if we need one more layer to make it lippier. Now I've got my um, first little overhang deal done here. And I've decided that I do want it a little bit lippier. It just, yeah, it's, there's, it's just not, I don't know, feels like it's not sturdy enough or whatever. So, okay, you know, we've been doing the long side, long side, short side, short side, that whole thing. Because we want everything kind of staggered and nothing stacked on top of each other. So we have like a, you know, this situation going on and there's not two that are exactly the same length right up against each other so if we go in here and we do long side long side short side short side then we're going to stack another long one directly on top of this one and it's going to be the exact same length and it's going to just mess up our chi and we don't want to mess up our chi so now we're going to do short side short side long side long side see <laughs> So don't, don't let it confuse you. Just remember to alternate and don't ever have two right up against each other that are the same length. There's always, you know, short, long, short, long, that kind of thing. It'll make sense to you when you get it and when it's in your hand. Yeah, you'll get it. 
So now I need to, um, you know, I don't want to stack another long bead right on top of that one. I want to go this way. So I need a bead here, this length. And these are left over from, see, that's the same size that one is. So, you know, when I made this one, I made extra. And I always do that just, you know, for situations just like this in case I want to, um, make I need to come up with something besides lippy or what the heck am I trying to say if I want to increase the overhang lengthen the overhang is that it uh, whatever anyway I always make extra and then sometimes I will even you know if I've got an extra and it's almost the size I need but not quite I need to cut it down I'll cut it down I got no problem with that <laughs> Especially if it's a long bead. Anything that keeps me from having to remake a long bead, I'm all about it. Or a tube, not a bead. Yeah. So see, we're alternating. Do the same thing over here. kind of make sure I'm not, I'm not messing up. We're still good. Now I need two long beads to fit in there. And I think these these were the right size. Yeah. See that that was these I made earlier and I made extras while I was at it. And they are just the right size to fit right there. There we have our lid constructed. Oh, and it fits perfectly. Absolutely perfect. I like that. I don't like it to be too wobbly, and this one's not, but I don't like to have to, you know, stretch it just to get it to fit. So that little system that I just showed you will give you a perfectly fitting lid. And I love, love, love this this little knob is my favorite it's a little bit of a beast to make I mean all the components themselves are not difficult it's the construction because I ran a string through the middle and I had to use a dremel to drill through this pokey tool just it does not work you know that's that's a lot of paper going on right there and making it thinner didn't work because then it was all flimsy. So yeah, I love this, but I found one that I'm also liking that I'm gonna show you that still looks very cool, but it's just not quite as fussy as that. And that is this one. And this, I just glued this on a little while ago. It's probably not even completely set up yet, but it fits um, this this size box like that this is the lid that I really didn't like but I did like the the knob and I think it's it's proportioned well for that size box this box is a little bit bigger I might make this bigger I don't know let's just see what happens okay now um, this is another option for a handle these were some saucer beads that I made, paper beads, strung them on a string, and then just poked through, tied it, put a blob of glue on there. And I put glue down here too so that these are held, um, they don't move around, but these do. I like this. I think it would have been better on a smaller box. It just really isn't, I don't think it's big enough for the size box. So, Let's see what happens here. I think what I'm going to do is I have a whole thing of these made up. These little 
round deals. Like, my bags. And I've used these to make other things. I've you know, got a basket and a couple bowls. And, you know, when I'm in the mood and I get my Dremel out to put the paper bead in there, it's a fabulous look. So I've always got these on hand for that. But, um, I don't know if that's going to be big enough. Because see the little, the little thing that fits inside, the little spiraled thing that's about as big as it can get to go inside that thing now I can make a bigger one of these which I may have to do you know what else I can do okay where's my other one I made that other I'm missing a lid because I made one that had this on it how do I lose an entire oh there it is <laughs> yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, let's do this. That's what I meant to show you in the first place. I forgot all about this lid. It was hiding over there. It's got the spiral thing. And then I used some uh, tubes, and they were leftovers. You know, like I said, I always make extra when I'm doing the lid. And I just cut them down to fit that. Let's do this. Let's do this. And... This was a smaller one. I might do even a little bit bigger. Um, what am I calling this? I, you know, I've lost my words. I don't know. I'm at that age. I'm, my words are gone. But you know, this thing. I made. Let's make a bigger one of those and see what happens. Maybe. So to make that, you are going to need some strips of paper, and this is where. You know, when I'm cutting the larger strips and then I've got, I'm like cutting the larger pieces of paper for these big beads and I've got just a little bit left over, I'll keep those little pieces. Okay, see that one's a little extra wider. These are some narrower ones. Here we go. These were some off cuts. And I will use those to make, this is the more traditional um, paper tube. <gasps> Bless you. You can't hear me. <laughs> okay, the more traditional paper tube like we used to make with newspapers, you know. So, um, it's a little bit different than this kind. Not as sturdy, but you can um, coil it. Oh, that's what it is. Coil. That's the word I was looking for. The coiled tubes. Yeah. I feel so smart now. So, to make that, you're just going to need, I don't know how wide these are. I would say use something maybe about three inches wide. Um, doesn't really matter. The, the key to this is just whatever you do, do it consistently. So, I'm going to use a uh, strip this wide, and they're all going to be this wide. And I'm going to lay my stick down. And I just need to make sure that, you know, whatever angle I lay it down, I do that every time. So, these work better if you lay your stick down, not quite like this, but more like that. Make you a little right triangle on the corner. And again, you know, your pattern is going to be, put it face down, because that's... You're gonna when you roll it, that will be where the pattern shows. So yeah, it it doesn't matter exactly how you do it, just do it the same every time. Okay? So I end up doing mine usually about like that. The little little right triangle. Roll this around and then roll it up. I'm just kind of pinching right here. To keep it up against the skewer like that and then again you don't you don't need fancy glue for this you can just use some uh, glue stick or whatever and there's your your tube or straw 
you just start calling these something different. Is this more of a straw or is this more of a straw? See, to me, this is more of a straw. This is more of a tube. Is that what we should do? Straw tube? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Anyway, you're going to make up a bunch of these. You're not going to need a whole lot. I'm thinking this was maybe four of these. Something like that. Not sure. I have some that I've made. So let's just start putting them together and see what happens. This is easier to do if you flatten them first. So flatten these out. And usually when you roll these, or okay, when I roll these, one end is slightly narrower than the other. It, it just the way I roll it, I don't, I don't even know why it happens, but I'm glad that it does. And I really almost do it on purpose because it makes it so much easier to um, connect these tubes. And what you do is just slide one end into the other. And this is where I just find the skinny end of whatever my, one of my tubes, and then slide it into the fatter end of another one. It's not really going in very far. I think it's getting hung up. That's okay. And I just put a little bit of glue in there. There it goes. To hold it. Oh, it got, it's all wadded up in there. <laughs> That's why it went in. That's okay. So you can connect them before you get started or you can connect them as you go. I'll do usually when I do it like this they end up coming undone anyway. I have to re redo, re glue. So this is really hard on my hands. So I'm going to do my best to show you how to do it without complaining too much. You basically just want to start coiling it in whatever way is easiest for you. A little, sometimes a toothpick is good because that'll get you a little tiny center hole you don't want the hole too big but I just get it started and then do what it takes to keep it going it's yeah it, it hurts it hurts my little my little arthritic hands I do occasionally sand my skewer just with some fine sandpaper and then wax it. You can rub it with a candle, you can uh, apply, you know, rub it with beeswax, uh, paraffin. I just sometimes I'll just rub some daddy vans into it just so that it stays nice and smooth and my papers don't get hung up. Okay, we're going. It's a little bit bigger center hole than I wanted, but it's all that my hands can do today. And I'm gonna show you how to make that other one too. I forgot I was gonna do that. That little roundy deal. Because they're very versatile if you want to put a bead inside them or whatever. Okay, I'm going to need some Advil. <laughs> it's not going 
uncomfortable, but it's worth it. Okay, yep, just keep it as tight as you can. And let me look and see. Don't let go. Whatever you do, don't let go. Oh, that might be about the right size. Does it look about the right size? I don't want it to be like too honking big. I think that looks good. Now, if I was at this point and then decided, oh wait, I need more tubes. I've got a little, like one of these chip clip things that will hold it. See, it's just pressed up against the chip clip in there and that'll hold it long enough for me to keep connecting but this is actually good so I'm gonna go ahead and glue it and I mean I could leave it like right out there you know just like that it just looks to me it looks funny kind of floating out there all weird and lonesome so that's why I did this little thing and you know I bet I could make a long okay let me show you this for these little roundy deals like this if you want to make up some of these because they're just perfect to put like a bicone bead in the middle but you do have to drill through them to do that but to make these, I just do just what we did with little tubes like this and flatten them out. And I, I don't remember how many those were, probably two, maybe two, possibly three tubes. And I don't remember what if I made it, which magazine I made it out of, you know, if they're the same length, I don't know. Like I said, so many variables. So, but what you do is this, like that, and then you just want to wrap it around something. Um, glue stick tubes are great, except they're usually a little bit wider down here or there's a notch or the texture changes same thing with the lid you know you don't want to pull the lid off when you slide this so I don't tend to use a glue stick for this but this little travel bottle of whatever that was is just the right size I've used it I have used bottles of nail polish um, sometimes the the handles are just right and you want it you know you don't want anything tapered it has to be um, even all the way around so you just yeah find something in that shape with the size it's the size that you want you know so that you've got the blank the hole in the middle and then you just wrap it around just keep it snug like that and that's how you make those glue it and then you can use those for all kinds of things so in my mind here's where my mind was going can I make one shape like this Oh, look, apparently I can. <laughs> and then do that. And like that. I don't like it. It just looks... I don't know. I don't like it. Okay. So yeah, I can do that, but I won't. So, maybe I'll just go ahead and do what I did with those others, with that other one, and make the little little bitties um, cut the thingies it's probably
probably a good idea anyway to show you how to cut those tubes. So, this is going to go here, and I don't know if I have an even or odd number of tubes, so let's just see where it ends up being the middle. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Middle of that. So I'm just going to take a, a something. Now I have a, there's a Sharpie. Kind of eyeball the middle. Oh, I think that's about right. Okay. Got my hot glue heated up here, so I think I'll just go ahead and hot glue it. Just hold it, and then I will put some. Uh, I can't find the end. That looks like the end. I will put some of the reptile glue around it as well. Okay, so we got that. That looks good. I'm going to cut. I'm just going to get me one of my extra beads here. Beads tubes. See this one? Yeah, that, that lid's a little bit bigger. because I like that. That turned out really good, but that's, that's probably overkill for that size of a lid. So, you know, let's just go ahead and go with what we said we were going to do. I'm just going to cut them with a craft knife that has a really good new blade on it. And I, I, I don't like my X-Acto for this. I need something sturdier. So I've just been using a, you know, a box cutter. And it's got a fairly new blade in it and this one I cut the little ends first and then the bigger ends so I'm gonna cut a little end here that's about I don't know uh, that there that there looks like like about that length that's what I want I think so. I mean, if I mess up, it's not like I have a shortage. I'll just grab another one. No biggie. So I just marked where I want to cut it, and then I cut it. And if you're at all squeamish, you're going to want to look away, because there's a pretty darn good chance that uh, I may bleed. <laughs> we just don't know. And I'm just kind of sawing through just as straight down as I can get. And turn it. There we go. It never ends up, you know, particularly pretty, but it's fine. Go in there. That's, that's too big. Give me a little. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. We've got our box complete. Now I'm just going to go and um, do this all over the place so that everything's got a nice coat of glue on it. And then I'm going to finish it off with some polycrylic. You can use any kind of, I mean, you can just use a spray sealer. You don't even have to put anything on it if you don't want to. But I like to put polycrylic on it. It just gives it a, a slat sheen. I use a satin finish. Gives it a slat sheen and just makes it, it look nice and finished. And then once that's done, it will look kind of like this. And I don't know if you can even see the finish on it. But when I go in and, you know, put the glue everywhere, I do make sure that I get the ends of my tubes really well. 
I want those really good and sealed. Um, and I, you can go in, you can run a bead of glue along the inside, hot glue or your uh, tacky glue, you know, whatever. You can do that to make it even sturdier. Lots of options. So I hope that this cleared up the um, any questions you may have had about the construction of the box and especially the lid, uh, the handle, you know, or knob or whatever you put on it. And um, hopefully that just cleared up any any questions you may have had. And if you have more questions, ask me. I will invent an answer for you. And I do thank you so very much for watching. The end.